1961 was a special baseball season. Roger Maris belted 61 home runs, breaking Babe Ruth's single season mark of 60 set back in 1927. Along the way, a back and forth chase with teammate Mickey Mantle caught the attention of an entire nation. 50 years later, the M&M boys might not be around to celebrate the memories of that historic season, but we recently caught up with some of Maris's children, Randy, Richard, Kevin, and daughter Susan in Gainesville, Florida, to discuss the season that will forever immortalize their father. Randy, what does 61, the movie 61 do for your dad's legacy? I, I think it helped it out immensely. You, you know, I mean, it's, it's good that the story was told that the way it should have been told and, and to show what he, exactly he went through that season. And one day maybe there'll be a life story of him that everybody really, you know, needs to learn about. But that was a great portrayal of the 61 season. What Billy did with the cast was amazing how he got all those guys that looked so similar was, to the was that Was that eerie? It's eerie, yeah. Looking at Barry, Barry Pepper and Thomas Jane, and I, I, I don't know the guy who played Bob Serve off the top of my head. I don't remember his name, but I went back and looked at pictures. Once I saw the movie, I went back and looked at some old pictures, and it was amazing how much he looked like Bob Serve, too. I mean, you know what's amazing about that movie, too, is from what we've been told, you know, Billy was pretty close with uh, Mickey, and Billy, to his credit, did a lot of that. You know, he researched stuff, but a lot of that was through Mickey storytelling. You know, and he didn't, you know, we at, at that time of our lives when that was going on, we had a, another endeavor that we were taking part in, and we couldn't really uh, collaborate with Billy at all. So when 61 came out, you know, we as a family were like, because we didn't have a lot of say, and we weren't sure, boy, how is this going to go down? How is, you know, is this going to be accurate, blah, blah, blah. You know, so I remember sitting down and watching it the first time, and, I was taken away with the whole thing. I mean, it, you know, it was just, it, once again, it was a learning experience, some things I learned, you know, and, but, I mean, it, we were, it, was, it was very well done, very pleasing. And with. Andy Strasberg helped him out on that film, too, which Andy Strasberg was one of, probably my dad's biggest fan, if, if uh, there ever was one, and a lot of that research and stories, too, was, you know, attributable to Andy Strasberg as well. well. Let's talk about Andy for a second, because... I think he played a very big role in your father's life, just being a fan. Right. Um, he said uh, 1960 when your dad came to the Yankees, he was a Roger Maris fan. Yeah. And he sat in the same place and he always rooted him on. Your father knew him, he knew where he, where he sat. And he pretty much stayed around your family his entire life. Just give me some examples of what he meant to your father. Actually, the, you know, the first time I met Andy was was at Dad's funeral. Um, and uh, Mom introduced him as Dad's Dad's biggest fan, so she knew that about Andy. Uh, I know Andy had gotten Dad, he worked for, uh, Andy Strasberg had worked as a marketing manager for the San Diego Padres, and he ended up getting my dad out to San Diego to participate in old old timers game out there. But, uh, you know, Andy has just some of the most amazing stories that you ever want to hear of how my dad treated him. They had a, had a special relationship. And I think when you have fans on you all the time and here you have this one kid that just idolizes you and thinks you're God, it's, it's fantastic for that. What? And I know Andy's biggest thing is there was an article about dad that said Roger Maris rejuvenates the Yankees, and he always says, "I didn't know what rejuvenated meant, but I liked it, and that's why I went with that." But let me ask you this: In 1961, Andy saw him outside the stadium because the players parked their cars and walked in, and fans could come up and meet the players as they came in. And Andy always used to try to get there to meet your dad and walk with him as he went in. And your dad looked at him, and Andy said it broke him up because at the time he said, it's not fun anymore. And you know how, how, how much it meant to your dad, so. Well, I mean, you can, you can just imagine what he went through. I mean, just looking at the movie and going through that. My dad never wanted any glory. He never wanted all this publicity. All he wanted to go was doing his job and go out there and get the job done, which he was doing. And to be crucified for what you're doing, yeah, it couldn't have been fun anymore. I mean, he didn't want all that. All he wanted to do was go out and play baseball. But to his credit, let's be honest, when he got to that point, 
56, 57, 58, there came a time where, you know what, I want that record in the end, just like anybody else did. But, you know, starting out, there's, it wasn't like, okay, I'm gonna, I want to hit 61 home runs. You know, but as he had to start having a great year and numbers started totaling up and RBIs started piling up and yeah, then all of a sudden it started to be attainable and he was like, but when you got there, you know what? I do want that record then. He and only the he resilience only had, paid off. He only had one home run in April. Right. One. Right. And people don't realize that he got off to a, not a good start at I all. I think it was two oh four with one home run and then he just had that crazy month from May to June. And, and, and that all goes back to in spring training, my mom almost lost me, you know, so he had a lot on his mind there. And then, and then once the doctor's prognosis, you know, said, well, he may end up making it, I think, you know, everything started moving from there. But So one of your other questions is going to be, was he proud of his record? He was damn proud of his record. I mean, he was very happy with Roger it. Roger the Roger, looking for home run number 56. In comes the pitch. There goes the drive deep into right field. It is going, going, it is gone into the bleachers. Number 56. And now Maris and Mantle have 108 homers between them to beat the mark set by Ruth and Gary. The most home runs ever hit by two men in one season on the same team. One big record down and one to go.